Greetings Internet, it's Monica and today I am so excited because I am back with a favorites video. It's been a little while since I've done my most recent favorites video but it just seemed like the right time because it is the beginning of the change of the season. Spring is upon us as you can tell from my window. It is not pitch black outside right now and it is, what time is it? It is almost 7 p.m. and it is still bright out. What? What a dream. I have missed this, that is for sure. Uh, so yeah, I'm just in such a good mood with the changing of the seasons happening and knowing that sort of the darkness <laughs> is beginning to end. Uh, and I just wanted to share some of the things that I have been loving from makeup to films to books and everything in between. Recently I did a sort of life catch-up video a couple of videos back and I did it in sort of a get ready with me style and I really liked that so I'm gonna do that again with this video and that way I can show you some of my favorite like makeup items while I'm talking about them so hopefully that's okay. It seems like a lot of you enjoyed that style of video, so doing it again. And I would also just want to give a big shout out to this video's sponsor, Disney Book Group, in celebration of the recent release of The Everlasting Rose by Danielle Clayton. This book just came out and it is the sequel to The Bells. Danielle Clayton is a voice in YA who I really admire and just am super fond of. She is one of the creators of the We Need Diverse Books organization, and she is also the COO of that organization. If you're not familiar with We Need Diverse Books, basically they are an organization that advocates for diversity within publishing, especially children's and YA publishing. So really huge fan of her and her work with them. Um, and then The Bells, I think also really reflects that. In the world of the Bells, everyone is born gris, so basically gray and featureless, and then the only way that you're able to be beautiful, beautiful, or have, you know, discerning features is by the work of a bell. However, in order to gain access to a bell, you also have to have money, and so it's also this, like, way of creating, like, a class structure through beauty. So in the, in the Bells, it is this, like, fun, why fantastical story uh, but it's also this like conversation around like the price of beauty and like ownership of one's body and things like that. The Bells follows Camellia who is one of the Bells. There's only a select group of them. The beginning of the first book they sort of have this showcase where they each, where they each show off their different abilities and then based on that they're placed within different um, parts of the kingdom and one of them ends up getting picked in order to work within the royal palace. I really don't want to say anything else outside of that when it comes to the plot because I think what's so fun about the bells is the way that everything is just very slowly revealed. I don't want to give too much away but yeah excited that the sequel is finally out. So first what I already have on my face are these two bad boys right here. These are both primers. Uh, this one is the Innisfree Mineral Makeup Base in the color Vanilla Green and this stuff is literally like a pasty green, mint green kind of color. Uh, you are not going to be able to see from this far. But basically what this does is it totally cancels out redness. And I have quite a bit of redness on my face and even when I apply foundation it's always like a little bit, not patchy, but like you could tell that some areas are like a different shade than others because of that redness. So I just put this on and it totally cancels it out and gives me like a completely even base. What I will say is that if you don't cover it, it can make you look gray. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Don't, you know, don't just apply it to your face and think you're good. You're gonna want to cover it with something, but it does like totally neutralize gray, uh, red, and I absolutely adore it. The next item I want to talk about is the Gripping Primer from Cover FX. This is amazing. It's so good. Basically, this is like a clear, like glue for your face. It is like sticky and thick. It doesn't feel like something that you want to apply to your face, but you do want to apply it because it like suctions your makeup onto your face and forces it to stay all day. It's wonderful. It also creates this really beautiful glow because it is like very wet and like vinyl looking. So it, you know, it's also one of the things that it says it does. It gives you that glass skin look and it really does. It like just makes your skin look super like moisturized and hydrated and I love it. I think it's fantastic. Underneath all of that, I've been really loving this stuff. This is the Clinique Moisture Surge and it is the 72 hour 
auto replenishing hydrator so there's like a bunch of different moisture surge items within this line this is the one I love I think this is like the most dense um, that's not like a cream and I actually use this not as a moisturizer but as a serum it is very I mean it's like a thick serum but it is like just super super hydrating so I love to use this as like my first step right after I wash my face I apply this and then I apply an oil and then I apply a moisturizer uh, there are a lot of steps in my, to my skincare routine uh, but this stuff has been really really great with like bringing hydration into my skin because winter and some other like skincare stuff that I've been doing has been a little unkind to my face and your girl needed some hydration and that seemed to do the trick I love it so another thing that I've been loving is this little dude this is from the brand Oak and Fort uh, which has a store here in New York City I had never heard of them uh, other than the fact that my friend Alexandra and I recently went and checked out their store um, in Soho and their stuff was like really very like minimalistic and modern it's very much so not my style of fashion uh, but their makeup looked really nice so I decided to try out one item and this is like the perfect perfect terracotta color I love it for uh, my cheeks and nose because it gives you that sort of perfect like sun-kissed blush like kind of like your sunburnt kind of look so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this I'm gonna use a brush I got asked in my last video where this brush is from it's from wet and wild I got it's literally I bought it because it was the cheapest blush brush at the drugstore that I was at so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this onto my cheek so I like to start off by using a blush brush for this just because it will it will apply like a like a base that is just very nicely blended from day to day where that would be where I would end it but sometimes I want to be a little extra so I'll go in with my finger and I will pat and I will use this to like create a more exaggerated blush effect bring up a bit closer I suppose so you can see definitely a bit more exaggerated over here but across the bridge of the nose because I think it looks cute and then as per usual I apply some onto the tip of my nose as always another thing that I recently started trying out is the new Glossier play line which I have just been I'm just a huge fan of the entire collection um, but one of the first things I want to show here is the highlighter this is a new Glossier highlighter this is in the color I think it's called Pale Rose. Yeah, Pale Pearl. That's what it's called. It's the palest color. Um, I kind of wish they did have like a shade lighter than this, but I do really like this. Um, I think this is the most perfect nose highlight. Um, but what I'll first start off by doing is my cheeks. And it just adds this really like, it's, a, it's an intense glow, but it also like looks natural because it doesn't I mean, as natural as a highlighter can look. Because it doesn't have uh, glitter, it still looks, you know, like your skin. And I really like that, um, especially when it comes to highlighting other parts of my face that aren't my cheeks, because I don't really mind having a ton of glitter on my cheeks, but I don't really want glitter and shimmer on my nose, you know? I'll apply some onto the tip of my nose, right at the very top of the bridge of my nose my inner corner and on my chin and then I again I just dab that in with my finger and I'm sorry if my voice sounds croaky I am just getting over being sick which is a sad day look at that nose highlight oh it's so perfect and pretty so it is kind of funny doing like so much beauty stuff after talking about a book that's literally about like the price of beauty but I think that's something that's like really interesting about like like that's a sort of internal conversation I've had with myself a lot when it comes to like makeup and beauty stuff because like I find makeup so fun and creative and I really enjoy it but I also try and be thoughtful about it too like if I start feeling like oh I can't go outside without makeup which is how I used to feel once upon a time then I know it's time to take a step back and maybe not apply as much as I do um, but for me right now, makeup is just something that I really love playing with and experimenting with and just seeing how many different colors and types of glitter I can put on my face. Another highlight that I'm loving is this Fenty Beauty highlight. This is in the color How Many Carrots. 
and it is just pure glistening shimmer that is it just looks white on camera just like boom hello I am here see me shining from space I kind of wanted to do initially like a pinky rosy look but I actually I think I want to play with I also got these pencils these eyeliners um, from Glossier and it's their color slide pencils and you can use them you don't have to use them just on your eyes you could use them all over your face and I've been playing around with these these are fantastic they're really creamy and pigmented but once they set they do not budge like they are locked in and I've been really really enjoying that so I am gonna go in with this blue one which is called early girl I'm sorry if this has moved <laughs> My camera battery died. It was a sad day. Anyways, as I was saying, I love this stuff and I want to try it out. So you can see that like blue line that is going across the lids. I just really like this like look of just doing a pop of color right across as like an eyeliner. I think it's really easy but also very pretty. So I'm just super into it. Um, now I'm going to go into another favorite from the play line. There are a few. I think this is the last one. There's one more. Okay, one of the last ones. So this is the glitter. This is in the color Phantasm, which is the clear. Uh, it's a glitter gelée. This is amazing. This is literally the best glitter ever. I'm a little annoyed at how small this is. Like, this is very dinky. Uh, but it is fantastic. Uh, and it it like it stays so well so what I if you guys have watched my other videos like trying to do glitter freckles and stuff the way I typically do it is by using eyelash glue um, and I apply that and then I apply the glitter and this just makes that so much easier because I don't need to do the eyelash glue this stays so much better like even better than the eyelash glue I'm a huge fan so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this along that blue lash line and then I'm also going to apply it onto the sides of my cheeks for a little pop of glitter um, and I'm going to be using the little applicator tool that you can purchase with it. I wouldn't really recommend purchasing this unless you're buying it as part of the set because in that case it makes sense but otherwise I feel like you could buy this for much cheaper in a lot of other places. So yeah I really love this collection because it's just like it's so fun and playful and it's like this really cute like disco vibe that I'm just really into. I just think it's so fun. It is truly like just this super playful collection of makeup and I am happy that it exists. I have two more makeup favorites before I am done with this part of the video. The first one is this milk makeup. Um, what is this called? This is a tattoo stamp. And I got it in the little heart symbol and it's super cute you just go you just line it up where you want it and where do I want it I want it right here stamp now I got a little heart I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and another stamp so I just think it's really cute and it's like it makes doing the hearts really easy if you like putting fun doodles on your face. <laughs> My last also Glossier Play product which is the Vinalic Lip. This is a click up lip pen thing and it's supposed to be like very vinyl-y sheen. It's supposed to have like a very vinyl type sheen to it. Um, I don't apply a lot of it because I'm not a huge like super shiny lip person um but I just really like this color it's in the color baby um yeah I just think it's like a really pretty strawberry red kind of color um and I I basically apply it so that it's like a stain more than it's a like lip gloss or lipstick I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my makeup if you want to see my entire like makeup routine from start to finish you can watch my most recent video um but I'm basically just gonna apply eyebrows mascara and then be done and I will be back to talk about the rest of my favorites. I've just finished up doing the rest of my makeup and now I'm gonna dive into some other things that I am loving. So I'm gonna start off with some life things. Uh, the first one is the launch event 
for Daisy Jones and the Six. This was so fun. So this, I went to the launch event with um, Emma from over at Emma Books and Kirsten, my roommate. We bought tickets to go to this event and we went and it was so fun. It was unlike any other book event that I've ever been to. It was like literally in a bar called Paper Daisy that hadn't, it, it's like brand new to the city. It had, it was like the soft open, I think, for the bar. Um, and so it wasn't even on Google Maps yet. It was a really cool space. Um, Taylor Jenkins Reid was there. She talked. Um, the whole space, they were like, they had a DJ who was spinning vinyl. Um, and it, it was all like 70s music themed. It was like so perfect for the book. And then I got the book and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read it. And I, I got the, um, audiobook on Scribd, which I'm really excited to listen to because it's told, um, also it's signed, which is exciting, um, it's told in this sort of interview style, and so the audiobook is a full cast, so I cannot wait to read it because also Judy Greer is one of the narrators, and I have a love for Judy Greer. I don't know why. I just think she's fantastic. Uh, so I'm really excited for this. The only bad thing is this sticker <laughs> it's not a sticker it's like they just put it there and it's the Reese's book club thing and it's so upsetting I just want to remove it so badly but alas other fun life events I got to go Hosier was in the city and did a launch event for his newest album Wasteland Baby which I love the song Wasteland Baby I think has become one of my new all-time favorite songs of all time uh <laughs> this is a little redundant but anyways it's such a beautiful song the album itself is really beautiful he has the voice of an angel uh so yeah he, he did a launch event at the YouTube space in New York City which I got to go to and it was so cool because it was like such a small group of people it was like I don't know 50 people or so in this like small space and he performed and he answered questions and then we got to like meet him and take a photo and he was like so tall <laughs> so tall uh but yeah I it was just such a cool cool event uh and I'm so happy I went I wasn't gonna go because I have not been feeling great health wise the past couple of weeks I've had some weird health stuff happen like the week before and then this week I have the flu so it wasn't looking like I was gonna be able to go but then the fact that I did did, did get to go was just like so cool and yeah I'm, I loved it it was such an amazing amazing time uh and yeah again he's the voice of an angel I'm so sad there is like this video that has gone viral because I guess he started performing in the New York City subway and so there's a video of him doing that and like wow that would be amazing to just like be walking home to my train and then there's Hosier singing his beautiful songs <laughs> what a dream I just saw Captain Marvel and I love it no spoilers I'm not gonna say anything but I loved it I will say that I think it lacked a little bit in the character development department that's where I really wanted a bit more from it and but I'll say that, that that's probably my number one critique of most superhero films is that I'm always like I kind of wish like they had focused a little bit less on the action and a little bit more on the character and there's only a few of them where I really feel like they like balanced it perfectly one of them would be honestly the last two Spider-Men Spider-Verse and Spider-Man Homecoming I think both of those did a fantastic job of balancing um, the origin story, the action, and then also like a really good character story. Uh, I, Black Panther, I think very similarly. Um, but with Carol, but with Captain Marvel, I think there's just like something about it that it it was a little bit hard to connect as much. Um, I think because you don't really get that like full sort of like backstory leading up to her. Um, but I love her. Like, I love her so much. I love her character. I love her story. I love her plotline. I love all the side characters. I loved the action in it. It was just so much fun, and I definitely want to see it again and again, and I can't wait to own it, and I can't wait to watch it with my mom and my sister and just everyone. I just think it's fantastic. So I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. I think it's just a blast of a film. Um, so yeah, I loved that. I've also been loving Umbrella Academy on Netflix. Oh my goodness. Now here's the thing. I will fully admit that this show has some problems. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's so 
good. It's so much fun. So I initially watched it because for two reasons. One, I love Robert Sheehan. I'm a huge Misfits fan. Two, uh, I loved My Chemical Romance back in the day, and so I wanted to watch this show that was based off of Gerard Way's stories. And I was initially hesitant to watch it because I cannot do like very visceral violence. This is also why I was initially hesitant to watch Sabrina because it's based off of a horror comic. And I was like, I don't know if I can do that. I would say that this is definitely more violent and like, like more like visceral in its violence than Sabrina. But I wouldn't say it's by much. And I still would say it's done in a very sort of like hokey manner, like purposefully, like it's not supposed to be this like grim, dark show. It's kind of supposed to be a little bit silly. And so I could stomach it. There were a couple of scenes that I just skipped ahead on and I, I didn't feel like I lacked anything because of that. Uh, so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of violence, <laughs> obviously, uh, but I really, really enjoyed it as a show. I loved just like as a character story, for me, what I love about it is that it's not like a typical superhero show and that it's not based around like plot. It's really more about like these characters and like studying these characters um, and their relationships with each other. And that's what I love. Like, like I just said, like my biggest gripe with superhero movies tends to be that I want more character. I want to learn more about like, what does it do to you as a person when like you're a superhero? And that's what I love so much about the show is that it really takes the time to explore the like emotions. Another thing that I'm totally loving is my diffuser. <laughs> so lame, but I got a diffuser because because I kind of just didn't want to deal with candles anymore and I liked the idea of like oils. It just sounded nice. So I got one and I got a few different oils from a couple different places. Uh, the one that I've been using the most is peppermint. Um, I really have been loving it. I, there's something so soothing about it, about it at night. I feel like I get a lot of, like I've talked about this in the past, I get a lot of like the Sunday scaries. I feel like every night my stomach gets like very uptight and the peppermint really does something to like just help me breathe and like soothe me and I think the sound of it also helps. So I'm a huge fan of my old oil diffuser. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend getting one if you're thinking about it. It's been fantastic. Uh, another favorite, which is more of like an announcement, is I'm doing a readathon. Wow! I never thought I would do a readathon on my own because it seems stressful, but I'm so excited and passionate about this one. So this is the Koreadathon. Uh, it's a Korean themed readathon that I'm going to be doing at the beginning of July and I've already created a Twitter account for it. It's just at Koreadathon so you can go follow that account if you want to stay up to date. I'm also going to be using that account to retweet um, just things related to Korean culture and Koreans in literature. So if you want to stay up to date with stuff like that, follow that account. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited. I uh, I know that there are a couple different Korean books that are coming out for the next couple of months, which is why I wanted to set it in July so that people could choose to read some of those books if they wanted to during the readathon. Like I will probably reading be reading the Cat Cho book uh, when that comes out for the readathon. Uh, but I'm so excited, and the response to it has been so wonderful. Outside of that, I don't really have any book related updates for you because I'm still reading King of Scars. Yeah. Um, I just haven't honestly picked it up in a couple of weeks. I haven't read anything in a few weeks. Well, that's a lie. I have read a little bit of The White Book by Han Kang, uh, which is uh, not exactly like fast paced reading. It's basically like it almost reads like poetry. It's very contemplative and like each like portion feels like it's a page or two long each like chapter and they're more like vignettes and the whole thing is like this existential contemplation of like life and death so not like a page turner but it is very beautiful <laughs> so that's what I'm also reading uh but King of Scars I I just like for the past few weeks have not really been able to read so I'm definitely very very behind on my reading honestly probably not gonna make my reading challenge this year which is fine honestly it's not a real number anyways as far as music, I am so excited that BTS just announced that they are having their comeback next month. That's wild. Um, really excited for that. I'm also seeing them in May. 
which I'm so excited for. But I don't really have any big music updates outside of that. Do I? Oh, no, yes, I do. Jonas Brothers, um, as far as music, probably the biggest like event musically in my life would be the new Jonas Brothers song, which I think is fantastic. The music video especially is great. It is everything to me. Uh, so yeah, I am majorly in love with the new Jonas Brothers. I've watched the Carpool Karaoke. Well, I've watched all the late show stuff because it is all hilarious. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited for new Jonas Brothers content. I'm hoping to get to see them when they tour in whenever that is. I am going to Japan in just a couple of weeks. I feel like I've said this in every video, in every one of my recent videos, but it's literally all I can think about. And I've been planning out a ton of content around Japan. I kind of want to pre-warn you. <laughs> I feel like I should pre-warn you all that like my channel is about to become like a Japan travel channel for like a little bit of time because I know that I want to vlog the whole time I'm in Japan. They're probably going to be daily vlogs. I know that I want to do a variety of other like related videos after Japan. I'm gonna do lots of hauls. I'm gonna be going to Disney, Ghibli Museum. I just bought my Ghibli Museum tickets. I bought them yesterday, by the way. That was an intense experience. I was not emotionally prepared for how difficult that experience was. That is it. Those are my favorites. I would love to hear in the comments down below what you guys have been loving recently, what I've been watching, reading, like putting on your face. I don't know. <laughs> just let me know and I will talk to y'all next time. Bye.